the people, the natural beauty, the fine roads, the impressive new buildings, the incredible pace of development and transformation. This is Equatorial Guinea. It's so much more than you ever imagined. Nestled on the western coast of Central Africa, Equatorial Guinea, including territory on the mainland and three major islands in the Gulf of Guinea, is the only Spanish-speaking country on the continent. Twenty years ago, Equatorial Guinea was one of Africa's poorest nations with a GDP per capita of $300 a year. Today, it is one of Africa's fastest developing economies with a GDP per capita of $24,000 a year. If we stayed as far as development is concerned, economic development, hydrocarbon development, the petroleum industry development, as far as the infrastructure is concerned, uh, it's, they've done a phenomenal job. You wouldn't recognize the place in five years. Would not recognize the place. The destiny of the country was forever changed by the discovery of offshore oil in the mid-1990s. Since then, revenues from oil and gas have fueled a dramatic transformation of the country, its infrastructure, education, health care, and the overall standard of living of its people. When I arrived in Eji, like most of the country in, uh, in Africa, I've been running on generator 24 hours in my house. For the last two years, I think I turned on the generator 15 minutes. And I don't know so many countries in Africa when you can run without generators. Today, enough electricity is generated to meet all domestic needs, and the entire country is being connected to the grid. Additional capacity is being added for export to neighboring countries. This sub-Saharan nation is unique within Africa in many respects, starting with the geographic mixture of a tropical mainland and a chain of fertile volcanic islands. The largest and northernmost island is Bioko, home to Pico Basil, the second highest mountain in Western Africa, rising almost 10,000 feet into the clouds. The island is considered one of the most beautiful and biologically significant places in all of Africa. The southern end of this island is, is a fascinating place. It has an enormous amount of wildlife in the forest. It has some of the most amazing beaches I've ever seen. It's a tropical paradise. Bioko is also the home of the capital, Malabo. Spanish colonial buildings still shape its character, especially the iconic cathedral of Malabo, Santa Isabel. Decir dentro de un año y fracción, la catedral va a cumplir 100 años. Ahora está en obras porque después de 100 años algunos aspectos de la construcción se empiezan a deteriorarse. La reforma no, no afecta la estructura, sino para que resplandezca. And the Santa Isabel Cathedral is only one of many impressive structures you'll find in Equatorial Guinea, which show the architectural and religious legacy of Spanish rule. A whole new section of Malabo, called Malabo II, is a business corridor and also home to government buildings, including the Parliament for Central African States. Travel the coast east from Malabo to Sapopo, just a few miles away. Here you'll find a state-of-the-art conference center, along with a luxury hotel, golf course, beach club, and the La Paz Medical Center and Pharmacy. We provide almost every field of medical services here, except oncology and invasive cardiology, or open heart surgeries. All the rest is here. Since I am here, we have never declined medical services from anybody who needed it but couldn't afford it. We always find a solution. As with much of Africa, a major health issue is malaria transmission. The government of Equatorial Guinea has partnered with Marathon, Noble, and other oil and gas sector companies to implement successful malaria control programs. At the time when they started the parasemia rate for children between 2 and 14 was around 
The overall transmission rate has dropped to 24% on the islands. Outside parties like Scenaria Incorporated developed a whole sporocyte vaccine with the idea of Bioko Island being the first place on the African continent to eradicate malaria both in the human population and the mosquito population. Other islands that belong to Equatorial Guinea include the Caribbean-like Corisco, with its white sandy beaches, and Anabon, which is some 400 miles southwest of Bioko and features a large volcano with a lake in its crater. Like Bioko, the continental region is tropical, with mountains, dense forests, rivers, and waterfalls. Several large areas are set aside for national parks, which are home to a host of diverse fauna and flora including gorillas and forest elephants. The largest city on the mainland is Bata, which is also home to a major port and the seat of government for half of each year. Once an underdeveloped slice of equatorial Africa, the continental region is now crisscrossed with fine roads. A major highway runs the width of the country from Bata in the west to the eastern border with Gabon, facilitating travel and transportation of goods. But the most ambitious development program of all is the creation of a whole new capital city at Oyala, near the center of the continental region. Equatorial Guinea has the unique geographical position to be that hub for the Gulf of Guinea, where industries can establish, for example, in the Mbini, they can build industries and manufacturing plants here. Es que yo creo que a día de hoy cuando un país presume de estabilidad política y sobre todo de una paz social es lo que hace que con eso tienes muchos incentivos porque primero el inversor que viene aquí va a encontrar que su rentabilidad siempre va para adelante, ¿no? The environment was uh, pretty receptive on, you know, people, entrepreneurs that want to build not just projects but also lives. The many developments in the country are part of the ambitious Horizon 2020 plan, which emphasizes infrastructure, energy production, diversifying the economy, and human capacity building. Pushing the country down this path of rapid transformation is President Obiang, who is determined to realize the vision of a modern equatorial Guinea. The leader has a broader vision, whereby he wants to, to develop not only in terms of uh, infrastructural development, but also he is developing the mind. This is the National University of Equatorial Guinea, where a new generation of young people is being trained to run a 21st century economy in Africa. Two decades ago, there was not a single university in the country. Today, there are almost 20,000 university students, with three new campuses being built as part of a major expansion of higher education. Terminan, según el proyecto, en el año 2016. Ahí se contempla todo. Tienen laboratorios, tienen campos de experimentación, tienen bibliotecas nacionales, bibliotecas tal como están ahí. Va a satisfacer a las necesidades del espacio físico de nuestra universidad. Todos se ven obligados a venir aquí porque todavía las escuelas se están creando escuelas profesionales. The government is on a, on a mission to develop the educational skills of, of, the, of the people. The government has also built thousands of subsidized housing units to help middle-class families acquire homes of their own. A full 35% of the 2014 budget is going to social spending. The bigger advantage is to, is to have government that is always willing to work with you. And I think that is something which I think defined the Equatorial Guinea. It's amazing in the last four and five years what's developed in this country. The way the country has evolved, you know, I've been here for 11 years, and the way it has evolved is astonishing. Yo invitaría a todos los países que primero vengan a conocer este país porque se sorprendería mucho. Creo que es un país latino en el corazón de África y que vengan a invertir en nuestro país porque no cabe la mayor duda de que su inversión se verá rentabilizado por la estabilidad que hay en el país y sobre todo la paz social que reina.
Bad. 